true off my chest, my husband wants me to be the mother to his affair child. Oh. It's romantic. What? Yeah. Yeah, you heard it right. You yeah, yeah, it right. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly what you think? Mm-hmm. That's fair. Yeah. I, 29 female, and my husband, 44 male, have been together for five years and married for two. I met him at church. I started going to when I moved cities to start my career. I worked for an insurance company, and he's a pastor. I know that we have a notable age gap, but he was always kind to me and made me feel special. Anyway, a week ago, he came home and told me he needed to talk. He told me through tears that he had been having an affair with one of our community members, 34 female, And now she had been pregnant with twins. She had gone into labor. She and one of the twins died. And the other one is in the NICU. He said we need to step up and that he wants me to turn my office into a nursery and set up a cot in the room so we can take turns. I became distressed and told him I wanted some time to think and that maybe I was not sure I wanted to do this. He told me that I made a vow to him in marriage and that God had blessed us with a child that this is our cross to bear, and that God will never give us something we cannot handle. I told him that it seemed like God had given her more than she could handle because she had died. Oh, I know I shouldn't have said that, but I was was not thinking correctly. Mm. He slapped me and Ah. told me that I needed to serve my husband, Mm. that God had chosen me as this child's mother, and I needed to be a humble servant. I just feel so strange. Yesterday, I cried so hard, I threw up. This woman died, yet I feel bad for myself. I feel so ugly. I wanted children and was saving for IVF because I'm infertile. And now that I have a chance to have a child, I don't want it. I feel like I'd be robbing its mother's grave. I pray to God, but if I'm being too honest, I never felt like anyone was ever listening. I feel like I have truly seen my husband and he no longer looks kind. He looks his age and very tired. I want to abandon him and the child. I'm only 29. I can start over. I have a remote job. I can take a day off when he goes to the NICU and pack my essentials and leave. Neither him nor the child deserve this. And although this is my circus, this is not my monkey. My husband wants me to be the mother to his affair child. I left. Is this a true story? I guess we'll find out at the end. It looks, (laughs) it really looks, um, I don't know, say creepy, but unbelievable. If that's yes. all you wanted to know, there it is. For those of you asking oh. how the woman died, why did you into my business? It was amniotic fluid embolism. I don't know much about those. I guess when they happen, things go wrong really, really fast. We lived in a more rural area, so they just weren't ready for something like that to happen. I didn't leave right away, as I know that I should have. It just wasn't easy. I stayed for two months. Mm. I knew if I did not at least try to make it work, I would not be able to live with it. Not because I wanted to save my marriage, but because of the what ifs keeping me up at night. Mm -hmm. I went to marriage counseling with my husband, but it was ultimately fruitless. Of course, it was Christian counseling. I felt like their goal was for me to forgive him rather than actually trying to help me. I was so utterly alone during that Mm -hmm. time. My parents and brothers are also religious. So even though they weren't happy with my husband, they kept urging me to do what a good Christian wife would do. I spent so much time. Which is what, leave? (laughs) Which is exactly what she did do? Mm-hmm. No, a good Christian wife will stay and forgive her man. We not with the fundamentalist rhetoric. I spent so much time <laughs> suffering in my own head that I began to realize that I was going through the motions, doing what I thought people expected me. I entered a state of derealization for that time, and that was an absolute mind. The real, the feeling of nothing being real, not even myself, was horrible. During this period, my husband brought his baby home, and while he tried to split the care 50-50 at first, he ultimately didn't trust me to look after the baby because I was lost in space. So he ended up being the primary provider. When I was with the baby, all I could do was think about how its existence ruined my life. It, it'll it look at me with its big blue eyes, and I would just wish it would disappear. I would actively spend time resenting a baby. There was a time when I was thinking to myself, and I wished it would stop breathing. That was when I knew I needed to leave. I was blaming a baby and wishing ill upon it, and that was not okay to do. I don't remember much about this time besides that. It was mostly a blur otherwise. I sought services through my work to talk to a therapist, and I eventually came back to Earth. She helped me make a plan. At no point did I fear my husband. I truly believe the slap was a one-off event. However, screw him. He doesn't deserve closure. 
On a night, he had a long Bible study. He always took his baby with him because he didn't trust me. I packed my essentials and dipped. I met him pretty quickly after college. I didn't have much to take as for furnishings. I fit everything I wanted into three suitcases and four moving boxes. It all fit into my SUV after some mediocre Tetris skills. I was able to change my phone number online before I left, but I did leave the divorce papers under his pillow with the lawyer's contact info. Kind of like a tooth fairy, but for adult assholes. Oh, <laughs> I love that. I was the breadwinner. In my state, we were not married long enough for me to pay spousal maintenance. At least that's what my lawyer's saying. Mm. I own my vehicle outright. We have our own bank accounts and a shared expense account. We filed taxes separately, and the church owns the house. He's being an ass about it all, but I'm hoping it should be done soon. I got a decent apartment in the city a few hundred miles away. I've never lived in a city this big before. Everything is so expensive, but besides that, I like it. I found a new therapist, met some new friends, and I found a new church with loving people. I still have my days, but for the most part, I'm content. I think it will always hurt on some level, but I'm working on taking my power back. I turn 30 next month, and I'm hoping it will be the start of the best decade. Ever. Wow. This is really wild. I mean, she definitely made the right call there. You know, dodging a bullet, that monster of a man, I would say, of a pastor. So um, I'll just go to some comments that I saw when I was, uh, when I saw this video, I just went to the comments section to see uh what others have got to say it's really usually it's usually it's very interesting there first up you know we got someone saying that tell the church and see if he still feels the same now you'll be surprised you know how churches can sometimes turn a blind eye especially with all this workism infiltrating you know the pews I mean, you know spiritual leaders can be seen as uh, infallible even when they are spouting lies from the pulpit. That's true. That's true. We must call it as it is. So let's not uh, let's not pretend. Then there is this uh, other guy who says that uh, save him. No, then we divorce. Save him with divorce papers. Ouch! Talk about a power move, and rightfully so because this guy's guilty tripping game was on another level. Trying to use their vows against her like that. Jeez, this is outright evil in my personal opinion. And uh, check this out, you know, this comment says, so manipulative. Go run, and she did. Boom, that's what I'm talking about. She saw through this manipulation and bounce as she should. But seriously, folks, uh, there were more red flags here than I'll say there were more red flags than like uh you know you know a bullfight <laughs> yeah so there were more red flags here than at a bullfight and i mean it's like a whole parade of warning signs and don't even get me started on this comment about god giving her more than she can handle because the other woman died which is so sad i mean that's just messed up anyways um What's your take on all of these? Just drop your thoughts in the comments below. And uh, thanks for tuning in to another episode of uh, you know life issues. These are these things are very important for us to know know who we are dealing with, for us to learn some lessons if we find ourselves in such situations. Thanks for tuning in to Obi Podcast. See you in the next one. Cheers.